Hey all you music lovers, Steve here with Salt Magazine. Thanks for coming back for more. As you can see, I've moved into the dungeon of the castle here in Beverly Hills. My uh, friend Robert here and all his little buddies uh, seem to quite like it down here. Now this week I'm focusing on Rob Crow and some of his latest accomplishments. So grab something cold and dark to drink and uh, settle in to see what we've got here. This week I'm uh, drinking some spiced apple brew from Weeds. Now normally you're drinking apple cider hot because it's normally cold outside when you're drinking it. Uh, now this isn't sparkling apple or anything. Uh, apple slice, if anybody remembers that. Uh, I used to drink that when I lived in Colorado. If somebody knows where to find that, let me know. Um, but this is not anything like that. This is apple cider. And it's got just enough spice in it uh, to where it's really good chill. Spiced Apple Brew by Reeds. Well, first up is what usually comes to mind when with the name Rob Crow. Some of you may even go back as far, you know, the, to the more indie days with Heavy Vegetable in the 90s or the more experimental thingy. Uh, maybe he has a other dozen or so other things that he's done. If you're a B-movie fan, you might recognize the name Pinback from the John Carpenter film Dark Star. Rob does look a little like Dan O'Banion, doesn't he? But uh, Autumn of the Seraphs is the fourth full album. Came out in 2007. Pinback is primarily the creation of two artists, Armistead Burwell Smith IV, or Zach Smith, and Robert Del Rulon Crow Jr., or Rob Crow. Well, both of these guys are creative multi-instrumentalists. You may know Zach Smith from Three Mile Pilot. It's real cool to hear a couple of guys layering harmonies over each other's melodies like like these guys do. Now, a band like the White Stripes play an irritatingly boring uh, style of syncopation. A lot of what Rob Crow does is heavily syncopated. But people love syncopation because it gives you something to grab a hold of, something to bob your head or dance to. But these guys add so much more to it all. Layers of sweet sound drenched thick like honey and with rhythms that keep your conscience guessing. Now, you may have heard the first track from Nothing to Nowhere or Barnes, which has an ending that reminds me of a 70s song that's that's sung in a round. And for life of me, it's on the tip of my mind, but I can't think what it is. Uh, it's kind of a common chord progression, but uh, there's a lot of cleverness going on here. And I'm, I'm sure the, uh, the lyrics mean something to them, something profound. But, uh, you know, just when you feel you, you connect with the line, probably, probably because of how it's sung, the rest is so cryptic. But uh, like a song like Good To See, it says, it's good to see you, it's good to see you go. Clever. And even more so since it's, uh, since it's sung with such sincerity. As is pretty much everything with Rob Crow. But uh, this is a pinback Autumn of the Seraphs. 
This brings us to the Rob Crow solo album, Living Well. Right off, this looks like the songwriter getting personal. Apparently, here he is with his wife. Who else brings you into their life like this? I mean, here he is with this kid on the custom label. Yeah, I didn't get in on early enough on the uh, on the orange vinyl. But uh, this dude is embracing life and lets you in a little. Here's a guy writing songs in his basement studio, then sharing them with you. All songs written, recorded, produced, and played by Rob in his room, except for some parts probably recorded at Zach's house while he was at lunch. <laughs> now, this came out the same year as Autumn of the Seraphs. And uh, this album is just as well crafted, it's interesting and enjoyable as anything else he's done with other musicians. And that's saying something. I mean, you've got overrated bands like the Beatles who sold their musical souls later on to drugs to try to become creative. And then you got a guy like Rob here who, with a bit of a trademark sound, does produce a lot of interesting and enjoyable music, much of which is just as deserving to top the charts. He's not afraid to record it even if it's kind of short. He gets it done and gets it out there. And this guy writes good songs uh, because he throws convention out the window and just makes music. I don't know how many of these albums have this PMRC style sticker uh, like this covering the shirt or whose idea it was but it is kind of funny it's the the same ribs as on his shirt on the inner sleeve and on the uh, custom label but uh, it's covering up this bafflement, which might seem a little out of place, maybe, without knowing some of his other music, as we will see. Now, I don't like to put words in an artist's mouth based on an album cover. I will say I've heard Rob say people should do whatever they want as long as they don't hurt anyone. And, you know, this shirt says, do what thou wilt uh, shall be the whole of the law. I've seen the Wiccans say, do what thou wilt, and it harm none. That's true. That's great. Except for one important thing. What becomes important is, without a moral compass, how does one define the word hurt? Now, people get good things done like Rob here, because we live in a society where we still have some freedom to make our life to make a life for ourselves. Despite the efforts of socialists out there masquerading as Americans. But anyway, many people seem to think that the only things that are wrong to do are just the things that they themselves don't want to do. But there are times in our life when we need justice. So we look to that moral compass. Our creator is that ultimate true north and where we basically get our laws from. And rather than just being an um, unreasonable killjoy, he's the creator of music and our ability to enjoy it. Now, the killjoy is the, the baphomet, the author of lies and deception. Now, isn't that cheerful? For such a title as Rob Crow's Gloomy Place, this album starts out, anyway, with a lilting yet upbeat tone, despite the name Oh The Sad Makers. This is Rob Crow's latest release, 
you're doomed. Be nice. Now, he may have come out of a short, gloomy state, yet he's still writing his lo-fi sci-fi that makes the boys cry. Like as in the ultra-catchy business interruptus, uh, he says, how much anybody worth? What is anybody worth? Good question. And with recent comments about the feasibility of, of making music as an artist, I wondered the same thing. There also seems to be an art to self-marketing, especially in times where music often has no value. I came across Pinback myself back in the day when so many people, especially the college uh, listeners, were downloading off LimeWire. How much money has been lost through things like that? And yet, with so many indie bands out there, free streaming online quickly leads you to good artists like these. Now, even though these songs are a little less airy than Pinback, and the um, instruments are played a little more deliberately, there is contemplation. And I guess the reason for the title, You're Doomed to Be Nice. But just close your eyes and point to somewhere on these lyrics and you'll find a phrase seemingly born from a cynical soul. Yet, really, there's few questions, let alone answers offered. Rob seems to be no matter of fact. This is just the way things are. And hey, it's only music. Maybe it's just easier to blow off melancholy of life uh, through blowing off the steam with music. But uh, whatever the case, this is another great collection of crafty songs by Rob and crew, which is made up of guys he's collaborated with elsewhere. I believe you can still find these last two on uh, Temporary Residence Records, Temporary Residence. Uh, there's a lot of music on here, just like the last album. Uh, he just writes good song after good song. Rob Crow's Gloomy Place, You're Doomed, Be Nice. Speaking of, I wonder if this blowing off of steam or just dealing with the melancholy of life is done through the apparent parody in Rob's Doomy band called Goblin Cock. I mean, how else to bring levity to life but through satire? Now, this picture disc is the uh, first album, Bagged and Boarded. I think it makes a rather nice goblin clock, don't you think? Now, if you haven't seen the video for Stumped from this album, you gotta check that out. I'll put a link on the bottom. Uh, it's funny, it's a real cool video. It's a good introduction to the band. Now, Rob says Goblin Cock is not a, is not a joke band. And yeah, in that Slayer, Cattle Decapitation, or anybody else isn't a joke band. But uh, seeing them live, you can tell they take the music more seriously than they take themselves. I don't know, they're having fun on stage. Because um, it's just cool stuff, you know. This sound is clearly Rob, yeah, with an emphasis on the heavy and the doomy. Not slow and long like early cathedral or anything, but more like the newer stony stuff. It's been called Doomy Comic Book Rock. Now, clearly, when you see this masterful cover art, unedited, we're dealing with minds stuck in junior high mode, yet it's clever and actually well produced. Now, this art is done by Mike Setfin, whom you might recognize from Star Wars or Lord of the Rings or War Warcraft or a bunch of other really cool fantasy art. Uh, he's also played guitar with Rob in a power violence band called uh, Alpha Males 
and he did the Pinback Autumn album and the next album I'll show you. But uh, this is one of the cooler album covers I, I've got. Uh, picture disc actually uh, on, a, on a rather cool album. So uh, check this uh, Goblin Cock album out. Now, this second one is called Come With Me If You Want To Live. Well, this second album actually harkens back musically to me to Rob's earlier harder sound in Heavy Vegetable. It's more faster paces. Or on the bagged album, you're definitely gonna be bobbing your head low to a pace that's slow only to have the rhythm change and make you pay attention. Um, a song like on this album, like We've Got a Bleeder, it stands out with its chorus. The song is moving along at a brisk pace for a long time, it's galloping along, and then the chorus chops it up and brings the doom. Now, though the leader of this musical horde is known as Lord Fallus, this man-child is clearly Rob. And yet, you know that's going to be a good thing. He's leaning in uh, more a direction of kind of like Fu Manchu here. You know it's going to be a good time. Once again, he got some awesome art by Mike Sutton. Uh, the inner sleeve is just boring white inner sleeve. Ugh. But there's some uh, cool custom labels. It'd been cool to have a budget that would have afforded him to have a story on the inner sleeve or something like that, but um, I just love this this album art. It's very, very cool art as an English guy, I guess. Uh, it's just really cool. <clears throat> kind of spacey on the back. But uh, very cool second album I got in copy. Now, I just recently received this latest release from the mighty Goblin Rooster. I had to sell my soul for whatever that's worth. I had to sign in blood, join a secret cult, just to acquire this glorious platter. Cut from hidden lathes where many a jack o' lantern gave their lives. As you can see, the blood which was given. Now, whereas the first album was doomy and the second one more loose, the tempos do pick up here to thrash you about with some metal math until the Lord here decides to speak and they slower it down to give the what for. Now, the BC Rich Warlock is whipped out and spells are cast. But uh, anyway, the uh, sound and tone on this album kind of brings all the previous albums I just talked about together in a tight package musically. Now clearly all this is meant in good fun and nearly as much humor, sophomore though it may be. Uh, it was really cool music. Um, it's kind of like going to a spook house I guess where there's a little spookiness, a little fun when you hear it's mixed with a lot of heaviness, a lot of heavy tunes. It sounds like they're having a good time. And it looks like they're having a good time. It's, if you've seen them live, the keyboardist always cracks me up. And he's always holding this skull and horns up. If he's not hitting the keys or hit the keys and then just hold it, just cracks me up. It's hilarious. You know they're having a good time. And you can tell they had a good time recording this album. It sounds great. It's, it's real tight. Um, but uh, I think you can still get this. I got it on Joyful Noise. Um, so this is numbered 106 of 500. Um, it's a pretty low number, um, 500. Um, but uh, 
look for this on Joyful Noise or uh, Discogs, you know. But uh, Goblin Cock, Necronomic Donkey Comic Con. Now, this last one I have to show you is 12 inch EP. It came with the Necronomic Donkey Comic Con album. It's called Dragon Trucker, a sock opera, let's say. It's something Rob's been working on for quite some time. Now, I'm a huge dragon fan. And I just love this art. All the tracks are on this one side. Uh, real nice label. And then on this side, it's, it's not an etching, which is kind of more common, but this actually shows up better with the screen printed in gold on the black. It looks really cool. Royal looking. I love icon art. That's my thing. And I love dragons, Dragon Slayer. Um, I just love this art. Now, every culture has stories of dragons and Dragon Slayers for that matter. Um, they're clearly just another frightening creature that people have killed off and all, not all that long ago. Um, and so we do have these stories. And Rob has come up with a very clever story here. Um, let's just say, spoiler alert as I'm giving it away here, it's kind of a beauty and beast story of sorts. As I've said, Rob throws convention out the window and he's come up with a clever story. This moves at a real fast pace, um, though it's an extension of the goblin cock theme. Um, it's, it's got that sound, but it's moving real fast. The vocals are the different voices of the actors in this play. And it starts out with the narrator. And he's saying, the mighty dragon awaked from his slumber. Aeons have passed since his last unholy carnal conflagration. The sons and daughters of his native land long since descended into those only who considered him and his kind pure mystical speculation. And then the Greek chorus says, raise his mighty claw and points at you. And then the narrator, a deafening sound is heard, a thunderous calamity that tears even the furthermost villagers in the land from their slumber. Sleeping children seek refuge in their mother's caress as the inevitable truth chases the, peer, the peering dawn. It is time to feed. <clears throat> and so the dragon commences to attack the villagers and everything. And so, you know, the king says, what do we do? And, and they decide we got to get this dragon slayer. And it goes through there. And it's very comedic how the, the king and the elders are, you know, fighting, debating and fighting back and forth. And, and it's, it's, he just cuts the chase. And it's really funny. I don't know whether he's just trying to go fast with the story or what. But he's cuts to the chase. And it's really funny. And then, uh, you know, the dra so they get the dragon slayer. And he's on his way. And he's got this renewed you know, purpose and because he's not been doing anything for a long time. And so it's got the, they're headed towards each other. The dragon is doing his thing and the dragon slayer and they're going after him. And then along the middle here, both the dragon slayer and the dragon start changing their, their tune. And it kind of gets metaphoric all of a sudden and, and they're contemplating their purpose in life. And, uh, and then it ends with a clever twist in wordplay where the term takes on a whole new meaning. A quite opposite meaning. Real clever. Clever play on words. A clever, fun little album. Um, it's You'd listen to it like it, like it is. It's, uh, it kind of goes along. It's, he's, a, he's a comic book fan and this kind of is read kind of it's kind of like a comic book and it would be cool for this this would be really cool as a comic book I guess um, 
for sure. Um, that would be cool packaging for this. Um, so that's a nice addition to the, the last album. Now, I do want to say that's clever. It's real clever how that's done. But I just want to say how we speak can either build us up or it can break down our aversion to perversion. So I think we should be careful with the words we use. If we can discipline the tongue, we can discipline our life. Because what comes from the mouth comes from the heart. And that's from my heart to yours. Now, that's what I've got for you this time. Thanks for joining me with Salt Magazine. I'm Steve Park. Right on, right on. Now let's get out of this dungeon.